Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, this is Faith School, where we learn about faith and grow in the things of God. My name is uh, Keith Moore. We've been doing this for some time now, so if it's your first time to join, there's a lot of things that have led up to today and this week and the part that we're on now. They're available to you. Uh, they're online. Take advantage of them. But uh, moving forward... We're going to believe God for answers for today, for now. And you might say, well, what about, you know, when this recorded or when this was aired or what about the time zones? Hey, the Holy Spirit has all of that <laughs> under control. He, it's amazing. The Lord knows the end from the beginning. And that's why we pray every time to believe for that which you or I cannot produce or anticipate, but that He can so easily accomplish at once. Let's pray it right now. Father, in Jesus' name, all of us agree together, asking you for the utterance, for the anointing, for the grace, for the strength. You're able to minister to every person, every language, every culture, every time zone, every uh, circumstance, and we ask for that amazing, miraculous ministry that only you can do, and ears and hearts to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Said out loud, uh, my faith is growing. My spirit is being fed. And I am an overcomer. Through Christ, through Christ, my Lord. My Lord. You're, you're a winner. Did you know that? Yes. You're a winner. You're a, an overcomer, a victorious child of God. The Lord did not create uh, in the new creation, the new birth, any failures. He didn't make any new creation failures. You are victory. I mean, it's in your spiritual DNA. Do you believe that or not? Are you made in the likeness and image of God? How much failure does he have in him? You can't come from him and be born of him and be fatally flawed. You can't be. We still got this flesh, you know, and it's going to be changed later too. And we still got, you know, a mind that needs to be continually renewed and, and, and changed. But the core of your being, your recreated spirit, is made in His likeness and image, and you are a forever part of His family, and you are created in His image. You got nothing to be ashamed of about who you are in Him. Say it out loud, in Him, I am amazing. <laughs> you say, yeah but, yeah, but I got this. Go, don't talk about that. Talk about who you are in Christ, in Him. Now, we've been on this subject for some time now about faith for healing, going down through each of the individual cases of healing in the ministry of Jesus, and we're down to the seventh one, the healing of Jairus' daughter. Let's continue in that today. Read with me. This is in Matthew and Luke and Mark. Uh, let's begin in Luke's account today, in Luke the eighth chapter, we've been studying this for some days now, but just looking at different parts of it, there are real answers for real life in here today. In uh, Luke, the eighth chapter and the 41st verse, it says, Behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, 
the people thronged him. Jairus, a man that a lot of people in the community knew, he was the man responsible for choosing who read the scriptures in the worship services in the synagogue. He chose who led the prayer. He acknowledged and allowed or chose who would expound on the scriptures. He, he could tell people to sit down. He could tell people to be quiet. He could send people home. He could take your name off the member roster. <laughs> He's the head of the synagogue. And many of the leaders and elders of the Jews amongst the Pharisees and Sadducees under the high priest, they were not big Jesus fans. I mean, the high priest and, and the, the elders, those were the ones that spoke against Jesus and called for his death and his execution. Uh, but Jairus is different. He, uh, you know, Nicodemus was different. You remember in John 3 that, than, than the others. And, uh, so no matter if the majority are going the wrong way, that doesn't mean 100% are that way. And that's why we should avoid generalizations. If somebody says, well, you know, well, all of those people are like that. No, they're not. You know better than that, right? Well, all those northerners, <laughs> all those southerners are like that. You're talking about millions of people, right? They're not all the same. All men are like that. No, all men are not the same. All women are not the same, right? Stay away from and, and refuse to use generalizations. Same thing with uh, different groups of believers. Well, you know, all those Baptists are like that. All those faith people are like, are like, all Catholics are like that. No, you're talking about millions of people. It'd be hard to find two that were 80% alike, right? <laughs> don't, don't fall for that, that trick. And so Jairus was different. His name means enlightened or illuminated. And he certainly had some light about who Jesus was. He wasn't against Jesus. And this is also the case. Uh, you'll hear people mocking and making fun of healing and miracles and, until they need one. Right? And when they're up against it and they need one, you'll find them to be more open <laughs> right, <laughs> to it than before. And I don't know everything that led up to this, but obviously Jairus was not only open to it, he actively went and found Jesus. He pursued him, found him, fell down at his feet, worshiped, and, and asked him to come to his house and minister to his daughter. And isn't it amazing that with everything that was going on in Jesus' life and ministry, he puts that on everything on pause and says, okay, let's go. Right? Let's go. And he's going to his house with him to minister to his daughter. If you skip down to the 49th verse, while he yet spoke, there came one from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, your daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. They got the report and there was plenty of physical evidence to back it up that it's no longer a case of healing. It's no longer a rush to hurry up and get there to help her before she dies. The thing everybody was afraid of has happened. She died. She's dead. And uh, no need to trouble the master anymore. Don't bother him anymore. Why is this in the book? Why do we have the detail of this? Because this is any other bad, crushing, evil report is going to have similar feel, similar wording, right? Similar phraseology. What? To convince you it's over. There's no need in you trying to believe or trying to say or do anything else. It's done too late, too far gone, over. Quit, don't bother. But Jesus 
didn't look at Jairus and, and start saying, sorry, we didn't hurry more. I guess, you know, we got held up some with the woman with the issue of blood. <laughs> now you're laughing, but that's how the enemy works, right? He'll come and say, you shouldn't have been messing around there because not only did the woman with the issue of blood touch him and get healed, but it said she told him all the truth and what she did. She went back and told him the whole testimony of all of her years of, uh, you know, failed uh, procedures and all that kind of thing. No, Jesus didn't look at him and say, I'm so sorry, Jairus. I, I wish we could have gotten there sooner. Uh, you're laughing, but that's, that's how the human mind thinks. Uh, Jesus immediately turns to Jairus. Oh, hallelujah. When he heard it, he heard them say she was dead. He answered and said, fear not. Somebody say, fear not. Fear not. Believe only. Say that out loud, class. Fear not. Believe only. He tells you what not to do. And he tells you what to do. And to do that exclusively. That's what the word only means. Um. When they were in the boat and Jesus came walking on the water and Peter said, if that's you, bid me come. And he got out and started walking on the water. And then he started looking at the wind and waves. Can you see, he could not look and focus on Jesus and what he said about coming and focus on the wind and waves and the fear at the same time. Can you see that? As long as he was only, everybody say only, only, only. Looking at Jesus, thinking about what he told him to do, which was come to him, and looking at him and coming to him, miracles are happening. He's actually walking in a miracle. Can you see that? I mean, not just something happened in a moment. It's, it's requiring a continuous <laughs> miracle for him to be held up and to keep making these steps. But... When he stops only looking at Jesus and looking at the thing that's scaring him, the wind is blowing, the waves are kicking, and the thoughts hit him, immediately he began to sink. Now, this will answer some questions. There's been numerous cases where people that have learned a few things that we're talking about now have started believing God and things changed and uh, got better or got way better or fully recovered and then you hear all at once, they're gone. People say, well, I don't understand. I thought they were healed. Well, I thought he was walking on the water. Come on, can you see that? I thought, how, how long does it take you to go down when the only thing keeping you afloat is the power of God. Can you see that child of God? The only thing that was sustaining Peter and keeping him above the deep and above the storm and above the drowning was the continued manifestation of the power of God. And the moment he stopped only focusing on him and believing him and focused on this, immediately he starts going down. It wasn't that the Lord pulled the rug out from under him. <laughs> Come on, can you see that? It was that Peter stopped doing the thing that allowed the power of God to be working under his feet and in that situation. And so there was a miracle in motion from the time that Jairus started worshiping Jesus. Can you see that? But when they get to this juncture where the evil report, the bad report comes, why would Jesus look at Jairus and say, don't fear? Why? Is it because fear can mess this up? Yes. Many people hadn't wanted to believe that, but it's true. Somebody said, well, no, no. Now, that's Jesus you're talking about, preacher. And he was going to do that whether or not. I can't accept that. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible actually teaches that in Jesus' own hometown, he couldn't 
do any mighty works. Is it true or not? Didn't say he chose not to. Said he could not. Somebody said, I can't accept that. That's the son of God. He's functioning as a man. Anointed by the Holy Spirit. And if people didn't receive him and believe in him, they didn't see the manifestation of the power of God. Whether they did believe and receive, they saw it. They received it. And so it is true that if Jairus had panicked and just yielded to the fear and just yielded to the grief and started sobbing and crying and carrying on and said, oh, y'all just go, just go, don't bother me now. There would have been no miracle. There would have been no miracle. Now, if you don't believe that, don't just think you got an issue with me. Put your nose in the, come right? Put your nose in these scriptures. And don't just look at it through the tinted glasses of religious tradition. See what it actually said, what the Master actually said, and what the Spirit of God said about these things. So, there's a reason why the Lord immediately turns and looks at him and says, don't fear. Is fear serious? It is. We, we haven't treated fear like the Lord has taught us to treat it. If it wasn't a big issue and factor, you would not keep hearing the angels, the spirit, Jesus, the prophets, right? <laughs> keep saying, don't fear. Don't fear. Don't be afraid. Fear not. How many times is it in the Bible? Fear not. Don't fear. Don't fear. Why? That's not just, you know, an encouraging pep talk thing. It's, it, it's a, a, a charge that the spirit of fear is here trying to rob you of your faith and your miracle, and you must not give in to it. If you give in to it, you're going to lose something really valuable and precious here in the next few moments. Say it out loud. I must not fear. I don't have to fear. God didn't give me the spirit of fear. And I refuse to fear. I resist fear. It has to leave. Hallelujah. 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 I refuse to fear. Now, you're going to have to do this more than once or twice in your life. Things will come up. Feelings will come. Thoughts will come. Symptoms will come. Bad reports will come up about things. And when they do, don't just try to pretend that there wasn't a bad report. Uh, you don't just stick your head in the sand. You look at it and you resist it. And you say, I've got another report. I've got another word. And you don't just try to fabricate something off the top of your head. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to believe that this happens. No, you've got to have something from him that you've heard from him that he quickened to you from his word by his spirit about this situation right now. Did he have a word? Come on, did you see that Jairus have a word here? Yes. Of a, he had a very specific word. He said, fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Is this the word of God? Yes. She shall be made whole. So see, Jairus is not just reaching for something. I'm just going to believe that she's okay. I'm just going to believe that she's okay. No, that's not what we're talking about. He heard from the Lord. Yes. Can you see that? He's not standing on shifting sand when he says, she will live. He said it. He had it in his heart. Now he's got confirmation of thus saith the Lord. Is that right? He has no reason to give up now. Huh? If you're going to trust God, you've got every reason to keep going to the house. Is that right? And expecting a miracle. Why? I got the word of the Lord. I got the word of the Lord. He gave, me a, he gave me a charge right here. The head, the head of the church we know today, he didn't know that's who he was. But he, how many understand he is close to Jesus? Hmm? Jesus is looking him in the eye. And the, what did the master tell him? Don't be afraid. Don't. Should we take this seriously? Don't be afraid. Why? 
Fear will try to hit you. And you got to get you got to get a hold of yourself and go, no, no, stop it. Stop it. And then speak right out loud. Fear, get out of here. Leave me. I refuse to fear. Don't be afraid. Only believe. You can't believe that all your bills are going to be paid and be upset about all these other economic factors at the same time. Right? What's going on at the company? What's going on in the Congress and the tax situation? What's go- you, you, can't, you can't do all that at the same time. Somebody say only. 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 You get the word from the Lord and you fix on that and nothing else about the situation matters. Hmm? People say, well, you're just, you know, simple, simple-minded. Yeah. And, and that's how you get miracles. <laughs> Is that right? You got to be single vision. And single focused. Uh, Would it have been a different outcome if Peter had been single focused. And not let uh, himself be pulled away to the wind and waves. Now we've all made mistakes. We're not judging him. But why is that given to us? To see you cannot entertain the other stuff. You know we we touched on this. uh, I guess it was last week's study talking about this. About uh, reports. And I've had people more than once say, you know, Brother Keith, please believe with me. I'm going to the doctor. I'm going for some tests. Believe with me for a good report. And I I say no. And sometimes they're very surprised when I tell them that. Why? Why? That's walking by sight. Hmm? I mean, mistakes are made on tests. (laughs) Is that right? And reports all the time. And, And are you saying... You're not going to be relieved until men tell you what they have seen and the results in their test that confirm. Certainly, we all want to hear a good report about our body or about this and that. But your faith must not be in that because then you're going to be unstable, right? If it's a good report, you're up. If it's a bad report, you're down. If they say you're a little better, hallelujah, I'm a little better. If they say, oh, you're worse, oh, boy, I'm I'm worse. See, unstable, double-minded, vacillating. We've got the word from the Lord. We got the good report. Hmm? If we hold on to that report long enough and steady enough, these other reports will have to come in line. Come on, can, can you see that? But we're not basing everything on that. And we don't have to convince the people uh, doing the test. We don't have to convince any doctors. We we thank God for the doctors. Let them do their thing. Use your faith with it. But we've already got the report of the Lord. What's the report? I will live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will live. And with long life, he will satisfy me. And show me his salvation. And as you pray and seek God, he'll give you words, uh, a specific word to speak over your body part or uh, over your body or over your situation. Just like he did right here. He said, fear not. Believe only. And here's what will happen. She shall be made whole. Oh, somebody say, thank God. Thank God. Thank God for the word of the Lord. If you hold on to it, it'll deliver you from all your fears and it'll make you stable and strong. When he came into, uh, verse 51, the house, he suffered no man to go in except Peter and James and John and the father and mother of the maiden. Now, why is this included here? Because the 12 are with him and others usually followed along too. Why do this? Well, we see it further exemplified when it says they all wept and bewailed her. He said, weep not, she's not dead, but sleeps. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out. And he only took Peter, James, and John, and the father Jairus, and his wife. So those five, Jesus made six. They're the ones went in the room where the uh, cold body of the little girl lay. Why? He put them out of the house. Unbelief and confusion 
affects the environment and can affect the outcome. If not, if it didn't matter, the Lord wouldn't have bothered with it. Right? He'd have just commanded over the situation. It wouldn't have mattered what they're saying, what they're doing. It must have mattered for him to go through the effort of putting them out. Hmm? Uh, Give place, I believe Matthew said in the King James. Give place. Another way of saying that is get out. (laughs) That's a bit abrupt. Huh? And these people have come to be nice. Right? And to pay their respects. And, And to show by loud crying and sad music how sincere they are and how much they care. And according to all their traditions and all this, this is going on. Here's something we need to learn. You don't have a better situation necessarily or usually because you have more people involved. Some people have had the idea, if we can just get more people praying, if we can just get more people praying, no, no. You're assuming all those people are going to be believing. And you would be wrong. (laughs) I said you would be wrong. And sometimes, but you'll see that, won't you, that people, they, they keep trying to contact more and more people and let more and more people know so more and more people can be praying and believing. You're making us an assumption that's not based in reality. Because how many of those people are just talking about it like it's hopeless? Hmm? Do you need that? Come on, can you see that? No. When, it's, when you're up against it, you don't need critiquers. Is that right? You don't need sensational seekers. What do you need? You need solid, real faith in God, unquestioning, unwavering faith in God around you, and that's all you need, only. And finding that, you don't find scads of people in every corner that are that. That's why he goes, you, you, and you. Mom and daddy, come on. No, y'all wait. In fact, everybody out. Every, everybody. <laughs> if it mattered with Jesus, huh? Who has the spirit without measure? Should we take this seriously? Then you should not allow just a bunch of stuff around you where you have any control or say so. It matters. Hallelujah. And that's our time for today. But please come back tomorrow. We're getting into the rest of this and why uh, it mattered and how the miracle happened. We'll see you tomorrow in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website. Or call us at 941-702-7390.